This piece is called Fix Your Shit. It's actually, what would you say, two different series of uh, images. These ones around it, a series that called I Went Walking. This whole show is your personal self and the societal self and how you navigate that. And each one of these panels was initially supposed to be a representative like a sidewalk. So when you're walking, I'd walk around my neighborhood and I would find all these different things and I really got into making handmade papers. Most of the images that you see on, on these pictures that are either like look old timey or black and white are from a stack of life magazines and people magazines that my old professor Dee Dee Halleck were all about like the civil rights movement and stuff. The thing about the bread is that there is no single way to display them. Yael Lipschitz, who was the curator of the show, decided to put the bread in the latrine. For me, it's a personal thing because I get to see these pieces of bread in relation to when I made them. Like the, the first bread piece that I ever made was this George Bush bread piece. It was the test to see, well, can I do this? Can I actually take an image and put it on bread? So you could look at various aspects or different pieces of bread and then glance somewhere else. For me, like right now, just looking at it, you know, I, I see the Marin, Marilyn Monroe's and, and the, um, Andy Warhol's and it makes me think of production. Is it meaningful or not meaningful? But obviously it is meaningful because it's in production. Okay, so, you know, I got to do this, uh, uh, you know, the show thing, right? So we're putting all the show, and it's, it's pretty much like, if you put a show together, it's pretty much reality TV, real action, right? So it's getting down to the end, and, and we have to build this space for where people are gonna come drink and mingle and stuff, and, um, and the curator, Yael, she had to go and basically was in my hands. And, and then when she left, you know, and I was like, oh, snap, this is my wheelhouse. Wu-Tang, Wu-Tang. So I, I go out back and I'm like, I'm a site-specific guy. So I really like um, weathered stuff. That's from, you know, from hip hop, early skateboarding. And so I started looking around and I was like, all of a sudden I was like, man, I'm, I'm gonna get that chair. The chair and the horse is gonna go right there in the corner. And then I was all like, oh, we're gonna bring out Don King. And then it made me think about like the inner thoughts. And then I was like, oh, uh, let me put this hand clap thing on, on the wall because it looks like a police lineup wall or a prison cell. And, and sometimes I feel like that in the art world. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm a black guy in art jail. I don't, I'm like, I don't know, like, it feels like it's sometimes. Let me in, let me in, I'm your friend. <laughs> you know, there's two things that are going on here. Is like, um, basically this is um, an old black caricature of wood carving of a buffalo soldier you know, and their representation in helping America during the war and stuff like that. The reason why I placed it on this rattan chair is because it reminded me of their African roots and they're still seated. Even though that they're quote unquote American, they're still seated in their, in their past, right? And slowly, because this thing is gonna slowly fall apart, they slowly forget where they come from. Um, this piece right here is called Home, and, it, and it's probably my favorite piece in the, uh, the whole show, right? It reminds me of my mom. Um, uh, 
um, because there are people out there like, you know, um, that have uh, pretty shitty situations, but their mom carries them through that love, you know, and it's, it's just so, um, it, it's not hard to explain. Anyone who knows their mom knows that love and they would do um, anything for you. So on the left side is a fucking, for those of you who don't know, is a latrine, which often gets confused with the vitrine, but the latrine is like, you know, the toilet. So it's a shitty situation, but your mom is the one that brings you comfort. So for me, this image, I'm not really, you know, consider myself a painter, but I'm, um, um, in, you know, I get inspired to make marks. And when I made this, it, it reminded me of two things, like the uh, profile of a woman in a bandana or also someone pouring a tea kettle, a tea kettle pouring out, you know. And um, I remember many mornings, Sunday mornings, getting up and my, you know, mom and dad playing music. So that's the... Um, the um the reference for the the 45 is that even though it's shitty there's always this love and this harmony that happens and that um is what is not really portrayed about like you know black family life you don't see that you only see the negative stereotype so i wanted to you know address that in uh, an homage for my mom <laughs> Or my mom. Okay, so um, again, when you know I make objects, they like tend to be words. Like this particular piece, um, which is called uh, "Brother Got a Bad," right, is made of of actually four different pieces. Well, um, three different pieces, let's say. You got the three words, make America, make great again, which is a reference to the Donald Trump, make, you know, whatever that thing is, make America great again. And then um, uh, a little portrait painting sculpture of propaganda with bread sculpture. From November 1st to 2017, these 60 men um, got shot and killed by the police. And I wanted to show the diversity of these men because we never get to see that. Because most of the time when we get, when someone is shot, we get to see like a mug shot. But in this particular thing, you get a chance to imagine, well, what were these people like or what was their life like? Again, I already said this, I don't really consider myself a painter or whatever, but uh, one day Henry was like, I had, you know, basically had made this transfer and I put it on there and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool, but it needs some more things. But I only had like two colors, <laughs> two colors, of, <laughs> two colors of paint in my house. And Henry was like, hey, why don't you come house it? I got all the paints and I'm like, okay, let's do it. And then, you know, I was kind of getting intimidated, but I seen all these paints. So I started, you know, messing around. It made me think of like when I looked at the finished image without the, um, you know, the words it was like this whole, like always this play of, of Aunt Jemima, you know, it's either like the strong black woman or, this uh, silly servant, right? And so I was like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a wordsmith. I could, that's from my hip hop days or whatever. So I was like, Aunt Jemima, ain't your mama. I ain't your mama, you know what I mean? It was a chance for me to explore textures too. But you know, like I said, I just make shit. <laughs> I used to work in um, Optimus Houston Family Home, which is a, a Kind of like a, I want like a halfway house between at-risk kids. And one day I used to work as a, a night counselor. And one day, you know, you know, doing all the reports and stuff, I, I found um, a three by five card that had this saying on it. It was like, "We're out of stock, African pride." Please ask residents if they would like another brand. 
And that to me was like so profound, right? I was like, whoa, because African pride is actually a hair grease for, you know, for black hair. But like taking out of context, if you didn't know that, I was just like, wow, you know, it, because that's like when you um, come into America, you experience this homelessness. I remember being um, in Arizona and this was like, it was like the craziest symbology ever. I was like at the corner of Malcolm X and Malcolm, uh, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Boulevard. And the fricking pole was just like, ah, it was bent at a 45 degree angle. And I was like, whoa, what's going on there, right? And we were looking for this guy. We went to his house and all of his little nephews and nieces and children around the neighborhood were playing. And the, uh, the word that would get the most um, reaction was to call the other, the kid African. Oh, you're African. I ain't no African. What do you mean? Don't be calling me no African. Well, and then it was just sad. You're just like, well, well you are. You might not understand that, but where does that, um, where does that come from? And it, it's a kind of an isolation, which is what like leaves you in a moment of solitude. You're always contemplating this extra pigment that you got in terms of humanity instead of just being a fucking human. This room makes me think of like, you know, the inner mind or what John Otterbridge always used to say, oh, you in the tool shed. Like I'd be like, man, I'm, I have this idea I'm not presenting. I'm like, I, I quite, I know where it's going, but I don't know where it's working out. And he's like, man, you in the tool shed. Just stay there a little longer. The ideal's gonna come. That's why I really liked all the tools that Henry had, you know, behind me. And I thought that made a good presence. Plus, like, with color, you know, because some people say I put together stuff like a painter. I don't quite know what that means, but, I, you know, I agree with it and stuff because, you know, I have a sense of color or whatever, but the tool shed, Wu-Tang, you <laughs> just like, I call this piece the Wild West, and um, I use this, uh, this Rodney King symbol, it seems to be frequently, in maybe three or four pieces, and you'll see it in a piece in the other room, but it, it, it just reminds me of, like, the inherent fear that, as a black male, you have with the presence of like police, that this could happen to you. And then even as a witness to some police brutality where you stay in your car and you only describe it and you don't want to get out and help or whatever, you move on. And here um, on here is a little narrative this, describing that like, this guy's at the, uh, like, you know, McDonald's and sees the cops, you know, um, you know beat this guy up and him, face is completely disfigured and, and, and then his friend is all like, well, did you go help him? He's like, nah, man, I just got my, t my chicken McNuggets and got the fuck on, you know what I mean? I've been taking uh, photos of the Sixth Street Bridge for the last three years and around there, there's always these little rubbish piles and I always find these like, like these toys and you know, and I think about human relationships, <laughs> most of them are kid-like. Like as you just saw, I'll take something, put it t together, or place it uh, down and then put something onto it. The one thing that I found out over the years, because I lived in a very tiny apartment at one time, through stacking, I would come to places that I would never think to explore sculpturally, just by stacking uh, one piece against another and so from that point i never considered uh one piece just to be itself because it could be part of something else this chair was when i started thinking about what are the possibilities of bread it's like okay yeah we can lay them down on the table but what happens if we start incorporating them in a more sculptural fashion because I was involved in the this sh this show about the Blackamoors and I found this chair in the thrift shop and it very much reminded me of the Huey P 
Newton chair for the Black Panthers. And then like, you know, white bread, you know, comes in, you know, basically kind of two kind of um, shapes. There's the bell shape, which I call, which is this one, and there's the square. I really like how the shape of this matched the shape of the chair. I was going through these images and I found this images image in a very an European crest of this black man in a crown. The Blackamoor imagery is always portrayed in a prestigious place. It's never subservient. You have something that venerates slaves, but at the same time is kind of racist. So what's the real tie to it? And then if you flip it on the other side, looking at now, I'm not going to say from all black people's perspective, but you have a different perspective as a black person in the, the heritage of what's been uh, spread throughout humanity through that culture or stream of intelligence.